Welcome to the ITU studio here at the Plenipotentiary Conference 2018 in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, where I'm very pleased to be joining the studio today by Stephen Barrow, who is CEO of IRCA in Bahamas and also chairman of uh, Committee 5 here at the Plenipotentiary Conference. Stephen, welcome to the studio. Thank you. It's great to be here. Now, I'd like to start off by talking a little bit about uh, Committee 5. Uh, what, are the, uh, what is Committee 5 here at the Plenipotentiary Conference and what are some of the discussions that have been uh, taking place? Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's been a new experience for me. This is my first experience chairing a conference committee. Um, it's been enlightening. Committee 5 deals with legal and policy matters. So we have before us um, a lot of the, the issues about changes to the, to the legal rules by which the ITU uh, functions or under which the ITU functions, um, as well as quite a few policy issues, things that go into some of the mandate, um, just being clear that we're within the mandate, that the ITU stays within its mandate. Um, but you know, it's been a very interesting experience also because it's opened my eyes up to the ITU as a, as a global organization made up of member states, all with their own views obviously on what the ITU should be doing and shouldn't be doing and how it should focus its activities. Um, and we, we're going through a, a period of such fast paced change in the industries or in, in, the, in the sectors that, that would concern us. ICTs, you know, someone the other day commented on, are we going to still be talking about voice and telex or are we going to be talking about big data and OTTs and, uh, and you know, and where are we going to get into, into the meat of things? We, so, you know, it, it has been a, it's been a very interesting experience and it's very interesting to watch as we have this almost philosophical discussion as a, as a union about what the union means to each of us and what it will mean to us tomorrow. Now, there's currently considerable attention being placed on harnessing the power of ICTs, of information and communication technologies, as an enabler for good, for development, for the benefit of people, of communities, of nations. And I wanted to ask you, what's your perspective on this? Um, well, it's, I mean, it's undi undoubtable. It can't be disputed that ICTs are at the very core of every single facet of our life. Every one of the 17 SDGs, every one of them has as its core, or one of the key enablers is going to be ICTs. Um, and it, you know, I, again, as I say, that in terms of how the ITU as a union related to ICTs specifically, and not these other 17 things, these other things, how the ITU as a union that kind of brings everything together is going to maintain that, um, it's, it's value to every one of those things while not encroaching. So, you know, we, we, are, we have to be involved in everything. And, you know, in every country you see how people's lives are changing on a daily basis based on ICTs. Um, I don't think there's a single day that passes by without some new application or use of ICTs sort of changing, fundamentally changing the way people live. Um, it's an exciting and amazing time. It's sometimes a bit scary because there's, you know, there's the other side, there's the cybersecurity issues and privacy issues and all the, all the, all the negatives of any, as, as with any technology. But I, I think it's clear that we, as we do our work, have to bear in mind that we are the, ICT has become the glue that brings together just about every aspect of, of life today. Now, this plenipotentiary conference is the first one since the world agreed on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and, and heading towards those. I wanted to find out a bit closer to home what's happening in the Bahamas to uh, ensure that the, the sustainable, uh, the ICTs essentially are helping to drive sustainable development. Well, it, it's, been a, it's been a very interesting few years. Um, you know, the, the Bahamas has done uh, quite a few key things, uh, worked on. So, We've created, uh, uh, the, the government of the Bahamas has just designated and so is seeking to create a technology hub and uh, uh, for a hub for technology, cybersecurity issues in Grand Bahama, which is our, one of our largest islands and, and um, our most sort of connected island in terms of um, physical, physical ability to be connected. So it's actually an amazing project where they're encouraging investment and they're changing the way people's minds work through education and capacity building. Um, so hoping for a lot of things there. Um, the Bahamas, and, and as you talk about sustainable development, we obviously are in one of the regions of the world that is susceptible to hurricanes and, and natural disasters of that sort. Um, so a few years ago, we were, two years ago, one of our islands was pretty much devastated by Hurricane Matthew. And um, that island has now been sort of, it's gonna be rebuilt, it's being rebuilt as a totally green, sustainable from the ground up island. Um, so it's a great experiment in sustainability and, and the working together of different technologies. So you're dealing with energy, um, ICTs, it, it's all, and again, ICTs are the glue 
and you, but, but we're literally rebuilding the entire infrastructure for these people's lives. It, it's really exciting. Um, from a connectivity point of view, we've done quite well. Um, the Bahamas has pretty much total LTE coverage, and that's used to provide both fixed and mobile. So we've gone to the point now where broadband is not quite for every single person, but almost all, because across 29 islands, you will have some pockets that are different to cover, difficult to cover. But, um, but you know, it has been a, it, it's been a, a real, you know, it's a great time to be in ICTs and to watch the world adopt the SDGs and watch ICTs form a real part of it. Is 5G going to be the solution, do you think? You know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see. The challenge with small countries, as you have major investments in one technology, the time it takes to now start talking about another is, is tricky. So we would have just had a second 4G network built ground up um, from a bottom-up approach, and it's a great network. Um, so it will be interesting to see how the next phase of investment in our, um, in our network technologies goes in the Bahamas, um, whether we need to jump into 5G very often. You know, countries have to, well, we, you know, you have to make the money work, right? So, but, but it will be interesting to see where we go with 5G. Certainly, it's being looked at very closely by, by us as the regulator and some of the operators. Um, and we'll have to figure out, I think New Providence, which is our capital and which is, uh, or the, the um, island where our capital Nassau is located, is very densely populated. And there certainly is a lot of scope for, for um, 5G technology, especially as the government goes into things like providing broadband for everyone, going into the urban, urban areas and, and redoing services again through the use of technology. Um, we have, so, so there is certainly uh, a lot of scope for, for 5G, 5G technologies on a small island that can very easily be converted into a, into a complete technology island. I mean, it's, it's not a hard thing to do. So maybe, maybe we'll get it. Now you've, you've touched upon this uh, um, quite strongly, but it, it, about half the world's people are now connected to the internet, the other half is not. I wanted to ask you, what is uh, the, the Bahamas doing to get everyone connected? Well, one of the, one of the key initiatives that we've, we've been involved in actually, as I mentioned, we're quite fortunate in the Bahamas itself. I think because of decisions that have been made over a long time that we're an archipelagic nation, 700 islands, 29 of them have people living on them, 17 are officially covered. Um, we've always had to have technology at the core of what we do, because we don't exist as a country if people can't speak to each other. Um, so we, we're, we're very well connected in the Bahamas itself, but one of the things that the Bahamas, we're quite proud, we've for the first time been elected to ITU Council at this plenipotentiary. Um, and, but our goal in being elected to council was not just about Obviously, we want to advance the Bahamas. Obviously, we want to advance our own technology. But we're a representative for the Caribbean region, where there are still a lot of pockets of connectivity issues, where we still have, uh, where we're all susceptible to natural disasters. So we really want to see a lot more happen and a real focus placed on ICT's recovery um, after natural disasters. We've had some horrible experiences in the region, and it's, it's a critical area for us. Um, connectivity to remote islands is a key area for us. So a lot, a part, of, part of what we're doing actually is we've, we've invested in getting ourselves elected to ITU Council. We intend to, be a, to play a much stronger role here at the ITU and we intend to do that on behalf of countries in the Caribbean and small island development states in general. We hope that we can be a, a, a spokesperson. It's very difficult for a small island, a SID, to be at the ITU, to be in Geneva. We've been fortunate enough the way we're organized in the Bahamas to be able to be here. So we think it's very important and that's, that's a large part of what we're doing on a broader scale to, to really, we want to make the Bahamas a center of excellence in ICT development in the, in the region, but also a spokesperson for other SIDS around the world. Well, that's great news and we obviously look forward to your participation. Finally, is there anything else that you would like to add to, uh, uh, to your message, perhaps to not just the, to the plenipotentiary corpus, but to our wider audience as well? Well, you know, I, uh, just generally on this concept that, you know, we, we really do as a country believe that the ITU has a, has a role to play and that, that that role, depending on the discussions we have at this planet part and the discussions we may have going forward, um, that role can expand, um, it can contract, and I, I think it would be unfortunate if it contracted. Um, we would like to see it. Obviously, there's a resource thing. You can't expand it more than, more than it makes sense to expand it. But certainly, we want to make sure it remains relevant where it is. And for, for us, as a small island development state, there are some key issues that we would always want to ensure that the ITU 
is able to focus on. Um, disasters, connectivity, persons with disabilities. Our, our biggest issue, I think, is bringing everybody into the world in a secure way. Stephen Burrow, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.